Hello, and welcome to the League of Women Voters of Pennsylvania's 2022 Primary Election Candidate Forum. I'm Dr. Terry Griffin, President of the League of Women Voters of Pennsylvania. The League of Women Voters of Pennsylvania is a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization with a mission to empower voters and defend democracy. At a time of increasing polarization in our state and our country, the work of nonpartisan organizations is more important than ever. We are pleased to present this virtual forum to voters so that everyone, no matter your party, gender, race, or location in Pennsylvania, can make informed decisions at the polls. I'd like to thank our valued democracy partners who made this forum possible. The NAACP of Pennsylvania, the Committee of 70, Pennsylvania Youth Vote, Asian and Pacific Islander American Vote, Pennsylvania Voice, Disability Pride Pennsylvania, and Common Cause Pennsylvania. During our forum, you'll hear from candidates for the offices of U.S. Senator for Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Governor, and Pennsylvania Lieutenant Governor. This forum will give the candidates a chance to share their thoughts on some of the important issues affecting Pennsylvanians. I hope you will take the time to view each candidate's video, listen to their thoughts, and form your own opinion. Then make sure to exercise your right to vote in the primary election on May 17, 2022. Invitations to participate in this forum were extended to every candidate currently filed, filed with the Pennsylvania Department of State. If you do not see a candidate represented here who is currently on the ballot, that is because that candidate chose not to participate. Finally, our nonpartisan ballot tool, vote411.org, is an excellent resource for researching all of your candidates, checking your voter registration status, and finding your polling place. Thank you again for joining us for this candidate forum. Together, we can make democracy work for everyone. Hello, everyone. My name is Anika, and I'm here with the League of Women Voters and Pennsylvania Youth Vote to talk to you a little bit more about the role of Lieutenant Governor. Now, Lieutenant Governor is like the Vice President, but at a state level. This means that if the Governor were to step out of office for any reason, the Lieutenant Governor would be first in line of succession. The Lieutenant Governor has many roles. They reside over the Pennsylvania State Senate, which means that they can break ties and votes that occur. They also serve as the Chair on the Board of Pardons, which is a five-member panel that can recommend to the governor to grant clemency, reduce the sentences, or grant pardons to those who have been convicted. Additionally, the lieutenant governor serves as the chair on the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Council, which oversees a preparation for and response to disasters that occur in our state. Now, the candidates for lieutenant governor run independently of the candidates who run for governor in our state. This is in both the Democratic and Republican primary elections. In order to run, the candidates must be at least 30 years old and have lived in Pennsylvania for a minimum of seven years. If elected, they can serve a maximum of two terms, each consisting of four years. Now this was quick, but I hope you learned a little bit more about the role of Lieutenant Governor. Thank you for listening in. The most important role of the lieutenant governor is to be a voice for every citizen and every municipality across the Commonwealth. Pennsylvania is made up of 2,560 local municipalities. It is this level of government that has the greatest daily impact on our families and is where every taxpayer turns to for the services they need. We depend on local municipalities to provide police departments to protect our communities support our schools, and provide access to hundreds of social programs. They are also responsible for the roads and bridges we drive across. Having served as mayor and county executive, I know the multitude of challenges our local communities are facing. I will be their voice and yours also. My top priority, as Lieutenant Governor, is to address the runaway inflation that is undermining the economic security of every family and every community. Controlling inflation and creating jobs has to be top priority. It is the only way to jumpstart our economy, grow the tax base, and most importantly, relieve the financial stress burdening our families. 
as the only candidate with broad business and executive experience in both the private sector and government, I know what it takes to revitalize our economy, create jobs, and provide the support our families desperately need. By removing barriers to business growth, we become more competitive and create a business-friendly environment. For example, revising the tax and regulatory code is essential. Growing our workforce through educational opportunities and job training investment is important for long-term economic strength. Focusing on key industries such as energy will have an immediate impact on our economy. Investing in infrastructure such as broadband access will also stimulate economic growth. However, to accomplish this, we have to be able to work together. Having served as mayor and then county executive, I know firsthand that to govern effectively, you have to be able to bring people together. I've done this in each of the roles I've served and will do so as lieutenant governor. I have a successful record of cutting taxes, balancing budgets, investing in our police, providing secure elections, and innovating infrastructure projects, to name a few. None of this could have been accomplished and achieved without broad support of a multitude of people. I respectfully ask for your support and vote. My name is John Brown, and I am running for Lieutenant Governor. Thank you, and God bless. Well, I guess the most important job of the, the next Lieutenant Governor is to do the job as it's defined. Um, the Constitution and the statutory laws governing uh, the office of Lieutenant Governor are pretty specific doesn't give you a whole lot of latitude. There are roles related to the fire commissioner, to local government, to military bases, to emergency management. Uh, and then one of the ones that I'm pretty passionate about is, is corrections. Uh, corrections reform is something that uh, has finally, I think, bridged the bipartisan divide. And Republicans and Democrats are beginning to talk about it in a serious way as an answer perhaps to the workforce crisis. We don't have enough workers and we're warehousing people. And when you warehouse people and don't give the bright light at the end of the tunnel to say uh, there is hope for you, the ripple effect on education, on the disintegration of communities, all of it can be traced back to that hopelessness. So um, the, the main job that I think I can do as lieutenant governor is to bring the office, the job back into the roles that it was defined by law. And they're very limited. They're very specific. There really are no drama uh, roles, uh, roles that require the lieutenant governor to be the number two, uh, to stay out of the headlines as much as possible, and to be a workhorse. But perhaps the most significant job of the lieutenant governor is the one that in this political moment could be most helpful, uh, and that is maintaining civil uh, discourse and decorum uh, in the state senate. We, we could be a model. The Pennsylvania Senate could be a model uh, to legislatures across the country for how government could actually work between a, in a divided age between Republicans and Democrats. Uh, I don't think it would be too much of a leap to say that within four years, we could transform the way people view and trust their institutions. So the top priority of any lieutenant governor has to be passing the governor's agenda. And that's a significant departure, I think, from what we've seen uh, perhaps in the last four years, which um, the lieutenant governor has taken on a more activist role. His right, his choice, uh, every lieutenant governor can kind of define how they want to do the job. I want to bring it back to perhaps the late 70s and early 80s, that relationship between Dick Thornburg and Bill Scranton. Uh, you saw a lot happen, big consequential things happen, like Three Mile Island, you know, which happened within 60 days of the Thornburg-Scranton administration coming online. And you needed a no drama, no nonsense, straightforward lieutenant governor to communicate to the general public uh, the steps, the procedures, everything's going to be OK to bring calm to chaos. What we have in this social media environment right now, uh, where every five seconds there seems to be a new crisis, what we have in that moment is an opportunity for people like the lieutenant governor of Pennsylvania uh, to begin to bring people back to what is really important, which is the functions of government. Number one job, number one priority, if I'm elected uh, lieutenant governor, is to pass a legislative agenda. 
When the lieutenant governor's office functions, it functions as the switchboard between the House leaders, the Senate leadership, and the administration. That means you play a subordinate, almost subservient role. You don't have any agenda but to make the governor look good. The Pennsylvania Senate and the House are governed by a book. It's called Mason's Manual, and it's a collection of years and years of best practices, essentially, and rules that govern the way that debate happens. Uh, it's partially the brilliance of the founders in that the founders saw, I guess, the flawed nature of human beings. Like, we're all a mess. So when we come to a particular job that's as potentially as tense as the role of representing your constituents. And you bring all these ideas to this raucous legislative set of uh, legislative bodies. The rules are so important. So the lieutenant governor really embodies the role of referee. And if you can, using that Mason's manual, which, by the way, contains beautiful passages from someone named Thomas Jefferson, who knew how to, how to get his colleagues to work and cooperate uh, against sometimes uh, competing interests. Um, that book, the way that you conduct business in the Senate, the way that you model decency, civility, and behavior, and good behavior, I think would be tremendously important. I believe the most important role of the lieutenant governor is to be a strong governing partner for the governor, uh, to help him or her uh, carry out their mission and deliver their agenda, both inside the Pennsylvania State Capitol as well as across our Commonwealth. Uh, I'm thrilled to be endorsed by our Democratic nominee, Josh Shapiro, to serve as his governing partner as lieutenant governor. Uh, I believe it's critical that the governor and the lieutenant governor have a strong working relationship. Uh, in recent history, we've seen uh, when governors and lieutenant governors aren't on the same page, it doesn't necessarily serve the best interests uh, of our Commonwealth. Uh, I believe uh, the fact that Josh and I have, have committed to, to being a team this early in the process sends a strong message that we're going to work together to deliver real results for working class Pennsylvanians. As lieutenant governor, my Top priorities are going to be to be an advocate for working class families across our Commonwealth. Uh, I'm the proud son of a union bus driver and a hairdresser uh, and a first generation college graduate. My parents worked extremely hard to ensure my sister and I had every opportunity to succeed. And every family should have that same opportunity here in Pennsylvania. As Lieutenant Governor, I'm going to fight uh, for issues like raising the minimum wage uh, to ensure every child has a fair and efficient quality education here in the Commonwealth and to ensure the Commonwealth is creating ladders of opportunities for folks to join the middle class and live the American dream right here in Pennsylvania. I believe my work as a state legislator has demonstrated that I'm a leader who can bring people together uh, to tackle so, uh, the big issues that Pennsylvania is facing. I'm proud that uh, I've been elected by my colleagues to serve as the chairman of the Allegheny County House Democratic Delegation the second largest delegation in our Commonwealth. Uh, I'm the only candidate in the race for lieutenant governor who's been elected to a leadership position. And I'm the only candidate that's also moved bills in a Republican General Assembly. Uh, I'm proud of the fact that I, I've been able to get bills moved out of committee and, and through the House floor and to the Senate, uh, dealing with some of Pennsylvania's most pressing issues. And so I personally wanted to come here and to introduce myself uh, and to personally ask for your vote and your support uh, in the upcoming primary on May 17th. Uh, I would be humbled to have your vote. Uh, and so I look forward uh, to meeting you all throughout the course of this campaign and, and, and uniting Democrats behind a Shapiro Davis ticket to, uh, to lead us to victory in November. Thank you. Let me start by saying the lieutenant governor has two constitutional duties. First, that's to preside over the Senate. And then secondly, is to chair the Board of Pardons. To, to preside over the Senate means that I understand the role of government, I understand the, the function of the Senate, and I am able to guide that process from that position. And really truly having dialogue and decorum 
and being civil when we discuss legislation that is going to impact the Commonwealth, folks like you and me. Secondly, the chair of the Board of Pardons is a very important role also, and I'm working with a board of people, board of professionals who understand the criminal justice system. I understand the criminal justice system. I worked in the Federal Probation and Pretrial Services in Pittsburgh. I also ran and managed uh, our county's juvenile probation program to really help folks re-enter the community and to be law-abiding citizens and to really work, find jobs, find education, and housing. That's the role is to be the ability to grant a pardon is a huge task. It's a very important responsibility and really working together. So we're not putting violent criminals back on the street, but we're putting folks who are contributing to our society, contributing to our, their communities in which they live in. And I will do that from experience. And I will do that with the help of the professionals who also sit on that board. My top priority would be really building a relationship and working to assist the governor. We've seen over the last few terms where there's been um, the failed relationship. It's been broken. The executive branch in the state has been broken. And I want to repair that. I have experience repairing these types of relationships. As a matter of fact, when I ran for mayor of Newcastle in 2019, my number one, my top priority was to build relationships. Why? I wanted to build relationships so we can align ourselves with our county and with our region and work across party lines and work with, with folks to help truly bring a renaissance to my town. Having siloed approaches, having uh, bad relationships and really doesn't do us any good. So being that that was, that was my focus in my first campaign, it'll be a top priority of mine in my second campaign. I will work with the governor on many different fronts. I will help the governor pass his agenda. I will work with the over 2,500 municipalities. I will work with the 67 counties, and I will be the conduit between you and the governor's office and the General Assembly. I have experience doing that, and I've done it as mayor. Again, I have experience doing this. Building relationship is vitally important to our success. I currently am the Republican mayor of Newcastle, Pennsylvania, and I have five city council members who are Democrat. Newcastle was three to one when I ran. I worked very hard to address the needs of the people, to identify what was most important to them, and then take that back to my office and to my city council members to get those things accomplished. So I understand how hard political division can be and what it, the impacts it can have on our communities. So, but I also know that building relationships is a key, is fundamental to really helping us get to the, where we need to be. I've worked to build relationships in Newcastle and some of the successes that we have seen, not raising taxes, cutting our business tax, paying down over $10 million of debt. Those have been results of really truly building relationships and governing outside of political division. We have needs here in Pennsylvania and I can champion those needs and really bring resolution across the Commonwealth to communities like yours, to households like yours, and give our, govern our, our government an opportunity to succeed in Pennsylvania. I thank you for your time and I look forward to your support. The lieutenant governor's role is very important because he has to succeed the governor in the event if something should happen to him. My experience, my skills, my knowledge and background affords me the opportunity to step right into that place without having any hiccups throughout that transition. I've had 275,000 people that I've been responsible for in the past, well over $200 million of a budget I've managed, and I've dealt with 26 contracts and 26,000 employees who walked off of a job. I know what it takes to get people brought back together and get them back to work again. 
We need to find that same kind of leadership, and that's what I bring to this party. The top priority that I find in Pennsylvania is to get people back to work again, to remove all the mask mandates, to look at what we have failed on over the last eight years. We value what we believe in. We value our military. We value our law enforcement. We value our neighbors. We value our senior citizens. We value our jobs. We value schools, and we value school choice. We have to look at our assets and see how we can use those assets to bring in new businesses and look at what it's going to take to make it business friendly, create an opportunity to make businesses happen in Pennsylvania. We can do that, but we have to be able to have the right leadership in place. Leadership is so critically important. Folks, we need to have a leader who's going to set a vision and make it work for all of us. Unfortunately, we've had a lot of households that were impacted adversely by the shutting down of businesses, the shutting down of child care centers. The mothers had to stay home and do multiple tasks. For example, they had to handle their own child care, whether they had a teenager or whether they had a, a four or five year old, and then they tried working from home. It was virtually impossible to accomplish that. My top priority is to make sure that we never shut down Pennsylvania again, that we do everything within our powers to support the Tenth Amendment of the Constitution. We have to let people know that we have a government that's for the people who support all of us. Women play a very critical role in the economy in Pennsylvania. Getting women back to work, getting all of us back to work, will certainly allow us to be able to see progress being made, seeing how we can be able to uh, improve our gross domestic product. We need to be able to share that vision with everyone throughout the Commonwealth. It's important that we do this, and we do this one time, so that there's no mixed emotions or confusion at all about where this leadership is taking this administration. We have to have people working together. Getting employment back on the line, it doesn't mean creating more stimulus, it means getting people back to work. I thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to make it clear of what my vision and my role is as a Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We need to look at what is it going to take to get a good government in place, to get Republicans and Democrats working together, to have the 67 counties feel as if they are part of the solution and not a part of a problem that we've created here somehow inside our Commonwealth. We need to look at our natural resources and see what is it going to take to make Pennsylvania great again. Those are priorities that I believe leaders are going to inspire. Going into areas such as the Senate and the House, speaking with those leaders and getting them more and more engaged in what it's going to take to accomplish the goals of this governor and accomplish the goals of this lieutenant governor. We need to find out how we can do that, but we need to work together as a team. We can find opportunities to work together with the people that are existing in both parties, Democrats, Republicans. We have a lot of people here with a tremendous amount of skill sets to make Pennsylvania great again. We need to have me, James Jones, the Frederick Douglass conservative, who can make people understand that the inspiration of Emancipation Proclamation means something to Americans. It means that we are going to be set free once again. We know what the Pennsylvania Constitution lays out uh, for the role of the Lieutenant Governor, and that's presiding over the Senate, and that's emergency management, and the Board of Pardons and Parole. There's a few others, and it's, those are all very, very important. But what I know to be true is that Pennsylvania taxpayers are missing the right hand of the Governor. That is the most important role of the Lieutenant Governor understanding the agendas of the executive branch, how we get those done by visiting the communities. That's my role, right? I will visit the communities, understand the issues, bring it back to the governor, bring it back to the legislature and get things done that make real effective change that benefit Pennsylvania. That's what we must do. That is the most 
critical role of the lieutenant governor is being your advocate in Harrisburg. Many of you know me with my work uh, with school boards across the Commonwealth and putting our children in their education first. I do believe that education is so critically important and the reason for that is, is we are investing in our future, investing in the future of the Commonwealth, investing in the future of our nation and our wonderful democracy. We, it sets us apart from any other in the entire world. We must protect that, protect our children, their education, and ensure that they can go out to the workforce and be contributors to society. When we provide good education, when we look at creating competition like school choice, we are, we are investing in the future. That is what my advocacy work will look like. The one thing that we all have in common is we're all Americans, we are Pennsylvanians, and we're proud of that, proud Pennsylvanians. So my work at Back to School PA was bipartisan. And what we ended up doing was looking at an issue. 80% of people believe that children should receive in-person instruction. We found common ground and we got things done. We made effective, real change. We put people in seats across the Commonwealth who vowed to put children and their education first. That's exactly what we're going to do when I'm presiding over the Senate. We're going to put our differences aside, understand that the people of Pennsylvania put us in these elected positions as public servants and do what they need us to do. Get things out of gridlock that will help them, their families, their businesses, our police force thrive. Backing our men and women in blue, our first responders, is so critically important. And right now we see rising crime. We have to get the things out of gridlock that are in our in legislation right now and get them to the governor's desk to ensure that we all have safe communities, that we have the most dynamic economy in the world because we can, and that our children are receiving world-class ed education, every single child every single business owner, and every single person that puts their lives in jeopardy every single day to keep us safe. I will close with this. Uh, I'm known for being the mom uh, in Pennsylvania that uh, initiated uh, opening schools. And we know that Harrisburg is a mess, and it's going to take a mom to clean it up. Thank you. In Pennsylvania, our Lieutenant Governor does three very specific jobs that are held by three different people in many other states. Now, one of the things that I think is critically important to remember first and foremost is that we elect our Lieutenant Governor. They are not selected by either the party or the gubernatorial nominee. And just this year, 100% of my Democratic colleagues voted no to a bill that would have allowed either the Democratic or Republican gubernatorial nominee to select a running mate or re either of the parties to select their running mates for them. In Pennsylvania, per the Constitution, we elect our lieutenant governors and they run along with a, a, a ticket with the, the elected gubernatorial nominee after the primary. What we elect our lieutenant governors to do is, is three things. First is to chair the Board of Pardons. In Pennsylvania, our criminal justice system, as it is in the entire United States, is classist and it is racist. I'm a civil rights attorney and I have spent my entire career doing battle with the criminal justice system and 10 years in the House of Representatives. And to serve as the very first civil rights attorney to ever chair the Board of Pardons right now seems critically important to me now, perhaps more than ever in contemporary Pennsylvania history. Secondly, the Lieutenant Governor chairs the Emergency Management Council, something that very few people were paying any attention to until about two years ago. But it's actually the Lieutenant Governor's job when the Governor calls an emergency order to impanel the agencies, the organizations, the experts to resolve that emergency. I am the person running for Lieutenant Governor with the most experience in government by almost threefold. 
I've represented the core of our state's largest city. I've worked under Republican governors and Democratic governors. I've served on more committees in the House of Representatives than anybody running for this seat. And I believe that I have the most experience to resolve an emergency order in Pennsylvania in a way that makes sure people don't fall through the cracks. Now, the last job of the Lieutenant Governor is the one that is the reason many of you know it. And that's because in Pennsylvania, our Lieutenant Governor is the President of the Senate. Now, I'm the most experienced person with the rules of the Senate that's running in this election cycle for Lieutenant Governor, or that has run in several election cycles for Lieutenant Governor. I've spent the last 10 years in the House of Representatives working through and around and with these rules to try to advance democratic ideology in the face of some of the most conservative, heinous Republicans anywhere in the United States. And I am the most experienced person to be the voice, the eyes and the ears of a Democratic governor, of a Democratic party and Democratic leadership. Now, the role of the Lieutenant Governor is more than just those three jobs because the Lieutenant Governor has to show leadership in and around Harrisburg and around the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. For the last decade, I have been among the leading voices in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania on progressive democratic politics, from women's rights and reproductive rights to racial and ethnic justice, LGBTQ civil rights, criminal justice reform, fighting for the environment, and fighting for immigrants. I have been the tip of the spear and the face of the shield in Pennsylvania when it comes to fighting for democratic politics and fighting for democratic policies against some of the most radical Republicans in the country. And I intend to, intend to keep that up. It's my hope that with all of our hard work, Josh Shapiro is gonna be the next governor of this state. And as so, you know, the governor and will we'll understand the issues that I have worked on in my career and the issues that I'm trying to advance as a Lieutenant Governor. And it is my hope that as the governor sets his agenda, as it relates to women's and reproductive rights, as it relates to racial and ethnic justice and criminal justice reform, that I'll be a part of that agenda. The most important thing that I think that all of us need to recognize is that right now, our politics in Pennsylvania are wildly divisive. And it's part of the reason that we need a lieutenant governor right now that has experience and discipline. I'm the most experienced person running for this job, and I have shown, I've been the only candidate to show the discipline to run a statewide race from corner to corner across this state. I'm the only candidate that's been running for this last year. I believe that what the Senate needs is discipline and experience, because I believe that only discipline and experience can bring back both the right and the left within the Senate, that can bring back the decorum that is so desperately needed in the Senate. And with that, I wanna say thank you to the League of Women Voters for giving me this opportunity, and I hope I have your vote. To me, that's a three-prong answer. The first one, is the gubernatorial successor there to step into the governor's office should anything happen to the governor till the next election? The second, is the chair for the Pardons and Parole Board for the state responsible for second chances to our prison population? And third, is the chair for the emergency management system for the state? You cannot have a successful candidate for lieutenant governor that doesn't have extensive executive branch experience in exactly these specific items. I have worked for three U.S. governors. I've been appointed by them, and I've been in 11 task forces, two of them international, dealing with criminal justice reform, legislative affairs, and emergency management, making me the best qualified lieutenant governor candidate in years. I do think that our first priority right now should be getting us ready for our next natural disaster that will happen as a result of global warming. We're in no way prepared in Pennsylvania to withstand a major natural disaster. That's because our infrastructure and our vital rights of ways are crumbling right now. They have been ignored by our incumbents for many, many years and they need to be rebuilt and rebuilt now. Like I've said, I've been named by three administrations and I've been at offer leadership to different task forces to get us ready for disasters, both man-made and natural, making me the best candidate for this position. Something that I've learned 
in my extensive executive branch experience since 1995 is the value of being a statesman for everybody. I know that as President of Senate, I would need to allow everybody to say their part, to offer their ideas, regardless of their political affiliation. That's how you make the state go forward. That's how you build bridges. And that's how you get things done. And uh, we haven't seen that in a while. So we have to bring back statesmanship to the Lieutenant Governor's office. Again, I do have extensive experience in the executive branch of government, and I understand what it takes to take the state forward. Please visit us at raysosaltgov2022.com for more information. Please get out and vote on May 17th, and thank you so much. God bless you all. Greetings, my name is Shalua Ogamethod and I am the Executive Director at Pennsylvania Voice. There's a lot of talk in the news recently surrounding the race for a new governor right here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. But what exactly does a governor do? As the executive leader in the state, the governor holds the highest office in Pennsylvania government and they're elected every four years by voters all across the Commonwealth. They are responsible for enforcing state laws and have the power to approve or veto bills that are passed by the Pennsylvania State Legislature. The governor also appoints the heads of the executive branch departments, such as the Secretary of Health, the Secretary of State, and the Secretary of Transportation. Lastly, the governor has the ability to unilaterally implement emergency policies using executive powers. Now, you may be asking yourself, should I even care about the governor? Or how does the governor's job affect me? Well, the answer is simple. The governor oversees the inner workings of state government, and it's their job to ensure the best possible outcomes for all residents in their respective state, which includes you and your community. Because we, the people, elect the governor, it's their job to protect and serve our communities on a state level and make our daily lives easier by protecting and preserving our rights. That's why you should care about the governor's office. Mine are very simple restoring the fundamental liberties and personal freedoms of every Pennsylvania, which have been taken away by Tom Wolfe and Josh Shapiro during the pandemic in particular, but at other times as well. I'm running because I know that we're in a battle for the heart and soul of this nation. And those battle lines run right through Pennsylvania this year. We have an opportunity to reject the big government, big spending, overreaching, arbitrary and capricious model and return to the basic values of individual freedom and personal liberty. And in addition to that, we have to restore our economy to a place where Pennsylvanians can once again be prosperous in every corner of the Commonwealth. That means lower taxes, as I've fought for for my entire career. It means a more responsible regulatory system. And it ultimately means less public corruption, because job creators aren't going to come to a place where they have to, quote unquote, pay to play. I've fought for all of those things, and those will be my top priorities as governor, because small businesses in particular, and I'm a small businessman that's felt the sting of what Tom Wolf and Josh Shapiro did to all of us, have been shut down to a, an extent that literally a third of them may not come back. Small businesses are the great job creators of Pennsylvania. We have to encourage them, and by so doing, strengthen our economy in ways that will allow all of us to prosper in the future. Okay. And closely related to our economy is our educational system. And I will, as governor, guarantee what every child has a constitutional right to in Pennsylvania, a thorough and efficient education, not the indoctrination of critical race theory, the 1619 movement, and transgender issues, but rather teaching basic fundamental values like civics. I've proposed having every senior graduating from a Pennsylvania high school passing a citizenship test, which would mean that they've read the Constitution, understand the rule of law, have an appreciation for our history, and know what has made us truly great. I've said throughout this campaign that no issue ultimately is more important than our right to know that 
every honest vote is cast properly and counted correctly. Because if we can't trust the results, there really are no winners. One thing that the governor can certainly do is appoint a secretary of state. And let me say parenthetically, Pennsylvania is one of only nine states where the governor appoints the secretary of state who then administers statewide elections. And I will appoint someone who has two essential qualities. One, some experience running elections. And two, and more importantly, a fundamental, unstoppable, unchangeable commitment to the rule of law. Somebody who isn't going to make up the rules as he or she goes, who isn't going to change the goalpost, who isn't going to play games with our electoral process so that you have one county with one set of rules and another county right next door with another. We need to restore election integrity. We need to make sure that every vote can be properly cast and properly counted. That means making it easy to vote, but hard, if not impossible, to cheat. For many years, I've battled liberal Democrats on the air and in the media, but I always did it with a smile on my face. And when we left the studio, we left as friends. I've had some very tough discussions with some on the left, but we've always left with smiles on our faces. And I believe I can do that as governor, bringing people together, even though they don't agree, to do what's best for the people of Pennsylvania and what's best for our future. I've always been a coalition builder. I've been called the conservative happy warrior. I do things with a smile on my face, and I like to break bread with those who don't agree with me necessarily, because when you do those things, when you have those kinds of relationships, ultimately, it works best for the people of Pennsylvania. So I will be a coalition builder. I'll be somebody that works across the aisle. I'll be somebody who stands on principle and is willing to fight for principle, but is willing to do it in a way that isn't obnoxious, because you don't have to be a jerk to be a good campaigner and a good fighter. There's a number of issues that our state has made very poor decisions on, and I'll start with the way that it does not help people when they're trying to move forward and grow our economy. We need energy in Pennsylvania. That would be one of my top priorities to jumpstart our energy industry, make connections with the development of energy, with the delivery of energy, building pipelines, and also uh, the delivery through ports in Philadelphia and Erie. We do have a significant opportunity here to grow that part of our economy and give a lot of opportunity to people for jobs. Because I believe that the energy industry will trickle down to make us have more opportunity in manufacturing, which used to be a bedrock of Pennsylvania, especially in our smaller cities and towns, but has evaporated because energy became very expensive. If we have our energy developed right here in Pennsylvania, we're gonna have a lot more opportunity to regrow business in our smaller cities and towns. It's our economy that's really been a problem and people have not had the opportunity that they should right where they live. And my goal is to help make that happen for people across Pennsylvania. One of the other parts of that is our bureaucracy. We have too much regulation and it's really nonsensical. It doesn't really help anyone achieve their goal. It's important for us to focus on regulating where it keeps people safe, but making sure that we don't overregulate so that people who are trying to seize opportunities to grow businesses and make their families prosperous, to, to make it more difficult for them. That's not what we should be doing on the state level. The other issue is our tax system. Our corporate net income tax is 10% that needs to be cut. We also need to make sure that we are, are focusing on what helps people to advance. Our bureaucracy needs to be focused on helping people to comply with our regulations and our rules, not to say gotcha and go finding people at the first opportunity. We want Pennsylvania to be a dynamic, growing place and a place that people want to come. And so as far as I'm concerned, our goal is to make sure that, that atmosphere works for everyone, no matter their specialty, no matter their education level. Everyone should have an opportunity to thrive in Pennsylvania. One of the other issues that's been big is a concern about elections. And certainly there was a very large change to our elections in Pennsylvania prior to the 2020 election at the end of 2019. And what was done doesn't seem to me that it worked out well for Pennsylvania. And I think what we need to do is refocus ourselves 
uh, elections and people participating at the local level. Because when people aren't out and about, they aren't talking to their neighbors and they aren't building community. So what I'd like to do is repeal Act 77, which was the, the bill that changed our system and go back to having elections be the day of the election and also be held at the polls. But if people have a challenge, if they're traveling, uh, and they cannot be at the polls, then they can apply for an absentee ballot, much like the mail-in ballot, but they must apply for it in advance as they have to with a mail-in ballot. If we go to that, back to that, I think that's gonna help make sure that we focus on the integrity of our election. But one of the most important things that I think we need to change is to add a requirement for voter identification. Because if every voter has the confidence that he or she is the only person who's able to vote their name, then people should have more confidence in our elections. I think it's by having everyone work together. What I mentioned earlier about having people come out to the polls, that's how we build community. That's just a part of it. My poll always had a bake sale on election day and people would talk to each other whether they were Republicans or Democrats. And it was about community. It wasn't about the divisiveness that we've seen lately. I think it's important for us to build community on so many levels though, not just through our elections being in person again. It's important for us in each town to, like I was talking about earlier, provide economic opportunity. Let's have thriving chambers of commerce and different groups so people can meet and build together. That way we become more a part of each other's lives and we don't find ourselves in political silos and fighting like people have been when we were all shut down during COVID. I think that really exacerbated a lot of our problems. Social media, being locked in our homes. Let's start rebuilding Pennsylvania by rebuilding communities. I'm Melissa Hart, candidate for governor of Pennsylvania, and I appreciate the honor to speak with you today. It's time to return the power to the people. Pennsylvania should be the wealthiest, most prosperous, greatest state in this nation here. We should be. But because of failed politics and politicians from both sides of the aisles, we've been driven into the ground. It's no longer a time we can stand aside. So we do have to come together. So that's why I'm asking for your vote. If you want your freedoms back, you want to restore your families, rebuild the economy, and revive the state to the greatness that it should have, I'm your guy for the job and we will deliver results. My first day as governor, we will end all vaccine requirements. We will roll back any mask mandates. Once again, if you want to do it, it's up to you, but don't have any bureaucrat tell you how to live your life. And this, this is not the Pennsylvania that we all grew up in. We will fight for school reform and school choice where you decide where to send your kids to school. I will fight for your right to keep and bear arms, preserving your second amendment. We will roll back taxes so you can live your lives as you see fit and keep more of your hard earned money. And most importantly, we will fight to protect life of all people, the elderly and the unborn. I will work with the General Assembly to repeal Act 77 and compromise our election. It says in Luke chapter 11 that a people divided against itself can't stand. We need a leader that's gonna bring this state together. Right now we're divided. I've been fighting for freedom uh, ever since I was a young man. Most of my 20s I spent in uniform in the United States Army. All of my 30s, all of my 40s, and part of my 50s as a soldier, every day on active duty, seeing how these freedoms are so precious, seeing how people around the world wish they had our freedoms, and then watching over the past two years these freedoms being stripped apart. We need a leader here that's gonna put the state and your freedoms above his own ambition, and I'm your guy for the job. I went in as a senator to deliver results, and I got the job done. As your governor, I'll even do more so. Well, we need to take on big fights and deliver real results to the good people of Pennsylvania, to break through the partisan gridlock and bring Republicans and Democrats together to finally get some things done in Harrisburg, like making sure we invest in our education system and change the dynamics in schools to do away with our reliance 
on standardized testing and create more space in the classroom for arts and humanities and vocational and technical training so that we can empower students to meet the opportunities that they want for themselves, not some bureaucrat in Harrisburg. We also need to ensure that we have safe communities. And so I'll invest in police and put more money and more resources into law enforcement to create safer communities and safer spaces for the community and the police to work together. Third, we're gonna ensure that we grow our economy by taking advantage of the unique opportunities we have around energy and eds and meds, and also ensuring that our economy grows for all, including people who have been left out and left behind too oftentimes in the past in communities that have been forgotten. And finally, I'll be a governor that makes sure Pennsylvanians don't get screwed. I mean, think about it, we have too many big corporations that put profits before people. Too many opportunities where Pennsylvanians aren't getting a fair shake. As Attorney General, I've stood up to the powerful interests on behalf of the people, and I'll keep doing that work as your next governor. Look, as Attorney General, I went to court over 40 times to defend people's right to vote, and to ensure that their votes were counted during the 2020 election. Every single time I went to court, I won, and those who were trying to suppress the vote lost. And we had a free and fair, safe and secure election that some Republicans won and some Democrats won in the different positions they were running for. What we really need to do right now is come together with some common sense, not conspiracy theories, and ensure that we do some things that improve our election system, like listening to Republican and Democratic county commissioners who want pre-canvassing so they can process ballots before election day so we can get results quicker. So we can do things like automatic voter registration so all legal eligible voters have the opportunity to participate in our democracy that we get young people engaged in our democracy early by offering pre-registration for 16 and 17 year olds. So while they won't be able to vote when they're that age, that right when they turn 18, they're already on the voting rolls. And finally, I'm gonna make sure we appoint a pro-democracy Secretary of State, someone who's gonna oversee our elections with integrity, who's gonna ensure that we continue to have free and fair, safe and secure elections here in Pennsylvania. Well, if you look at my track record as a state representative, as a county commissioner, and now as attorney general, I've earned a reputation as a bipartisan consensus builder, as someone who knows how to bring both sides together for the common good. We need to break the fever of partisanship and gridlock in Harrisburg and get back to bringing people together to get things done. Look, I talk to Republicans, Democrats, and independents all across Pennsylvania every day, and the common refrain I hear from them beyond any particular issue is they just want government to work again in their interests, not in the special interest interests, and they want the gridlock to end. And so I've got a long track record of doing that, of working on bills with Republicans in the legislature to get them passed in as, my, as a leader in our county government in Montgomery County actually reducing spending and having the lowest taxes in the region, earning our AAA bond rating back, and also making sure that we increase the output of government to meet the needs um, for those who had, had the most at risk. As Attorney General, um, I've brought warring factions together to get big things done. For those of you from Western Pennsylvania, of course you know Highmark and UPMC and the battles they had for more than a decade. Three governors, five attorneys general, tried to get them together and on the eve of 1.9 million Western Pennsylvanians about to lose access to health care because of this battle between the two companies, I stepped in and resolved that dispute and ensured access to nearly two million people in Western Pennsylvania to still be able to see their doctors and go to the hospital of their choice. I've got a long track record of bringing people together to get things done, and I'll continue that work as governor. Hi, I'm Lauren Cristella, Chief Program Officer of the Committee of 70 and President of the League of Women Voters of Philadelphia. The U.S. Senate is the upper chamber of Congress, representing large and small states equally, 
with two senators per state. Working with the House of Representatives, senators introduce and pass laws, which the president may sign or veto. Senators also approve presidential appointments, including federal court nominees. Senators serving on committees can conduct hearings and investigations on matters they deem important. Senators are elected to six-year terms in even-numbered years, with one-third of the Senate's hundred seats up for election at a time. The office is elected statewide, and there are no term limits. Only one of our two Pennsylvania Senate seats is up for election this year. My priority as your next United States Senator would be changing our minimum wage. As you know, it's currently $7.25 an hour, both here in Pennsylvania, but also federally. And there isn't anything you can do at $7.25 an hour that comes remotely close to supporting yourself, let alone a family. And that's just flat out wrong. It's unfair. It's un-American. If you work hard and play by the rules, and are willing to uh, hold up your end of the bargain, I believe that every worker deserves to live in a basic level of security and dignity. And at $7.25 an hour, that's just not anywhere close to being possible. And if, that, if I was the next United States Senator, that would be a priority. But in order to achieve that and so many other things that I would like to achieve, you'd have to suspend or eliminate the filibuster to make that happen because it's Republican opposition that consistently is stopping us from just enacting these basic, it's not politics, it's basic math. We know 725 an hour is gonna come up willfully short. You know, I believe as a senator and as a citizen and as a father, paying people a minimum wage that allows them to live in basic dig dignity is a fundamental covenant that we should have with every worker here in this country. And if I'm your next United States Senator, I promise to work tirelessly to help move our country in that direction. Nothing's more fundamental to the health and vitality of our democracy than a free uh, voting system that voters can trust and that makes it accessible for as many people as possible. And towards those ends, at a federal level, what I would support is the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, the For the People Act, and the Freedom to Vote Act here in this country in order to ensure that we are honoring our commitment to basic democracy, whether we like the outcome of the election or not, but we are honoring our commitment to expanding and safeguarding and securing universal voting rights for every American, regardless of their political background or persuasion that it is key to our democracy to make sure that we enact these kind of basic pieces of legislation that safeguard one of the most sacred things that we can do as citizens in our democracy, and that's vote. And unfortunately, over the last four years, that's been under siege, and it continues to be under siege. And those pieces of legislation, in my opinion, are critical in order to enact them and use those as a safeguard against those measures. And that's why we're proud to say we're the first campaign to call for the elimination of the filibuster because our campaign believes that's sadly the only way these kind of important pieces of legislation are going to pass in today's divided Senate. How would I, as Pennsylvania's next United States Senator, uh, not let political division stop uh, our political process from enacting meaningful legislation that can help transform our economy and our democracy. And the fundamental answer that we keep returning to, at least in my mind, is the elimination of the filibuster. The Republican caucus has made it clear that they will not support a single bill or piece of legislation that brings us closer to that, in my opinion. And in the absence of that kind of give and take or meeting us in the middle, there is no other option other than to eliminate the filibuster. I'm proud to have been the first campaign to call for the elimination of the filibuster well before our party was even there because we believed uh, uh, at the onset that unless you have 10 or 12 Republican senators of conscience that are gonna join us in passing an agenda for America, it's never going to happen otherwise unless we do that. We believe that Democrats need to come together and vote like Democrats. And it is not critical to me as a Democrat from Pennsylvania that I 
have to agree on every last single detail about these pieces of legislation or bills. But I do believe Democrats need to meet the moment and come together and make sure that we are united. And I am running to be that 51st vote here in Pennsylvania. If you trust me with your vote in May, you'll always have my vote in Washington, D.C. on passing these types of transformative pieces of legislation in the United States Senate. For me, the top policy issues fall under one bucket of what I called America's basic bargain. We need to make that real for every single family. And that starts with having a government that actually works for working people and works for working families. That basic bargain is about the idea that you can have one good job backed up by a union. Or if you have a great idea and you wanna start a small business, that there's an environment for you to do that. It's about having a level of certainty that your kids are going to get to go to a fully funded public school and that you can afford childcare. It's about making sure that if you get sick, you can actually go to the doctor and then be able to fill the prescription when you leave. And finally, it's about being able to know that you're going to be able to retire with a level of dignity in a house that you were able to afford in the first place, in a community that's safe and clean. It's why I've talked about the urgent need for us to finish the work of passing Build Back Better. But why it's also I've advocated for passing the PRO Act and making it easier for people to organize on the job, raising the minimum wage from the current 725 starvation level wage to $15 as a floor. It means quadrupling our funding into our Title I schools and embedding mental health services into every single institution where our young people are. It also means capping the price that parents are paying for things like childcare and that we have universal pre-K for every single family. It's also about making sure that we allow Medicare to negotiate drug prices, that we bring down the cost of things like insulin and EpiPens and other therapeutics. And then finally, it's about passing legislation like the Social Security Expansion Act and dealing with the astronomical levels of debt, be it student debt or medical debt, that makes it impossible for so many people to buy that first home or stay in the home that they bought. I can tell you as the Democratic chair of our subcommittee on campaign finance and elections, I have been in the thick of this issue. I was the person in the room making sure the Republicans weren't successful in doing an Arizona style audit before the 2020 election was um, even done and voted on. And I think the threats from folks who want to make it more difficult to vote, to throw out drop boxes, to turn back the page on things like early voting, that threat is real. But we need to also recognize that there are a lot of people who are sitting elections out because they're not sure that any politician or any elected officials actually in it to deliver for them and their families. That's why that basic bargain, which I referenced at the beginning is so critical. And the only way we get that done is by working together. Now we have to be clear that right now, there are folks who are only interested in obstruction, in fudging the facts and not operating and debating grounded in reality and grounded in the real data that we're gonna to need to address these concerns. Where folks don't wanna to work together, we have to plug forward and still accomplish things that the American people want us to accomplish. Take for example, the American Rescue Plan. That got zero Republican votes, but that was widely supported by the American people and had a major impact in pulling our economy from the brink during the height of the COVID pandemic. I think about the infrastructure deal, which got some Republican support, but many Republicans chose to vote against it. And yet even they are in their districts taking credit for the critical investments in our roads, our bridges, and climate remediation, and so many other concerns. So my approach to this is to not engage in a debate 
that's not grounded in reality and facts, but to welcome and engage anybody who wants to work on the issues that are in front of the American people. And I've done it as a legislator, working with colleagues on things like mental health care, criminal justice uh, reform, making sure that we are trying to lead the way on protecting our digital infrastructure and Pennsylvanians' private information. And we've been able to work on those issues in a bipartisan fashion. My hope is that when we win this race, we're gonna be able to do that even more. I'm grateful for the opportunity and thank you so much to League of Women Voters for all of the work that you do. Take care. My top priority will be your prosperity to make sure Pennsylvanians thrive. Pennsylvanians have a right to an excellent uh, education for their children. They have a right to great schools, schools that not only teach reading, writing, and arithmetic, but make sure that their children, when you graduate, sit back and uh, can have great jobs, have job training, teach entrepreneurship, and whether the, the child, your child, you know, decides not to continue beyond high school, there's still a job waiting there for for them, and that there are job and apprenticeships waiting for them, or that they want to start their own business. They should be get, having that training and having that mentorship and meeting individuals and, uh, who can help them start their own business. Learning about uh, micro grants and SBA uh, grants. Making sure that if I'm a United States Senator that there are grants, not loans for small businesses that your children and you may wanna start opening. I wanna focus on small businesses and Pennsylvanians and make sure that they, for Pennsylvania small business owners and make sure that those small businesses thrive. I met small business owners who were flooded out in, Nor in uh, Norristown and a small business owner up in Pittsburgh who were denied loans, who were de denied grants uh, during COVID and during their, their flooding. I will make sure that there are grants for small businesses in Pennsylvania, especially small mom and pop businesses, whether you're an ice cream shop up in Pittsburgh or you're a, 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 a salon in uh, Norristown. I'm going to make sure you have grants so that your businesses can thrive. I'm going to make sure that we fight crime and address criminal justice reform. We can walk and chew gum. I'm a woman. We can walk and chew gum. We do it all the time. Uh, we can multitask and make sure that Pennsylvania is a safe and wonderful place to live. We can make sure that we have clean air, clean water, and uh, and our water is pure and our soil is healthy. And I believe we can and must have uh, reform in our health care, that we expand Medicare, uh, make sure that for have Medicare for all, and that we have prescription drug uh, negotiated prescription drug policies. Yes, I support the John Lewis Voting Rights Act and the Freedom to Vote Act, and I would vote for those. And I would end the filibuster. Also, I would make sure that we do something about gerrymandering and uh, address that at the federal level and do something about this terrible situation where uh, incumbents feel that they can use the uh, very expensive challenges to people, uh, people's petitions on the ballot. I think it's a disgraceful use. Uh, it's a very undemocratic uh, use uh, of, uh, of your power and of, of incumbency, and that has to stop. And if we can do something at the federal level, I will. Finally, to ensure that legislation benefiting all Pennsylvanians advances in the Senate is I'm going to work with you, Pennsylvanians. I'm going to go door to door. I'm going to have community meetings. I'm going to get everyone involved, Democrat, Republican, Independent involved. And together, I will have uh, introduce legislation that you have buy-in because you know it will benefit you and your communities. I care about your communities, and I want you to believe me. And I will do that by first working with you. And by working with you, you then will, you especially you Republicans, Independents, and Democrats will tell other states and will tell your local uh, congressional, uh, uh, Congress uh, men and women, please pass uh, the bills that the con uh, Senator Khalil has introduced. Thank you again, League of Women Voters, for this great opportunity. 
Uh, God bless you all and God bless America. I think for me, uh, the connection between energy policy, climate change, and jobs here in Pennsylvania is probably the number one long-term thing that we need to get right, uh, both to do our part to save the planet, but also I think to be politically successful in our state. You know, we have a, a lot of middle-class jobs here that are tied to steel making, natural gas, even some coal, other forms of manufacturing, and getting the transition right to other forms of energy um, is not only something that we owe these workers, which we do, but it's, it's going to be a source of strength for us in the long term if we get it right before other people do. So I think we should be the first state uh, in America and, and actually in the world to make steel out of hydrogen. I think we should be the site of the first advanced nuclear reactors. I think we should figure out how to bury CO2 before anyone else does while we are still expanding the amount of solar and wind on the grid. We can do all of that stuff. We have the industrial know-how here. Um, but it's going to take a lot of federal research investment that you need someone to go down there and fight for. That's what I've done in the House as a member of the Science, Space, and Technology Committee. I actually led the Energy Subcommittee for a while, uh, and that's the kind of senator I'd be. As far as free and fair elections, uh, you can see our priorities laid out in two very important bills, the John Lewis Voting Rights Act and the Freedom to Vote Act, both of which we've passed multiple times in the House of Representatives and have been subject to the filibuster in the Senate. I am for getting rid of the filibuster as a first and important step to get these things done. Um, they would do things like encourage more vote by mail, early voting, same day registration, election day as a national holiday, uh, additional election security members to or measures to prevent unfair outside influence as well as domestic misinformation, gerrymandering reform, campaign finance reform. Uh, and of course, the Voting Rights Act would allow DOJ to actually go into a lot of states and localities and and stop unfair and racially discriminatory practices. So those bills are written. We just need one or two votes in the Senate to get rid of the filibuster and get that done. I do think we have to get rid of the filibuster to do that. A perfect example is the Equality Act. You want to talk about protecting all Pennsylvanians. We need to add LGBTQ folks uh, under the protections of the federal civil rights law. That's what the Equality Act would do. We've passed it twice in the House, uh, and it, it can't get through the Senate because of the filibuster. So I think actually if, if we got rid of the filibuster, you'd see Republicans vote for bills like that because it would be so shameful to be on the wrong side of history. Uh, and there are other bills as well that they would end up cooperating with us on once they knew they were actually going to pass. What the filibuster does now is it just creates a chilling effect where people don't even have to come to the table because the because the uh, bar is just way too high. So uh, those are some things I'd like to do. Um, I, I really believe I've learned a lot in the last four years about how to do this job as a legislator productively. Uh, and those skills and experiences and relationships in the Senate would allow me to represent all of Pennsylvania very effectively for a long time to come. Thank you.